everyone and welcome back to NP Station. So in today's video, I'll be covering the next part in chapter 6 of the book Coding for Kids in Python, written by Ms. Adrian Take. In my previous video in this series, we actually learned about the hexadecimal system, colors, how to change Toby's outline, and how to change um, his color. So I definitely did cover a lot of information in the previous video, but today I think we're going to be having a lot of fun. Today, we are going to start moving our turtle around the screen. Yes, you heard me. So we will all be learning many different types of functions in today's video. Are you guys ready to start coding? Well then, get ready, because we're just about to. Welcome back everyone, so as you can see, I have Toby's home open here and there's definitely a lot of water for him to swim around in. Now for him to enjoy it, how about we move him around his house using the forward and back functions. So both of these functions take a number as the input and that number will be the number of pixels that Toby will move across the screen. Now speaking of pixels, which is short for picture element, they are the small dots that make up your computer screen and pixels are the most common unit of measurement um, used when dealing with pictures and drawings. So how about we move Toby to start off um, 200 pixels. Now to do that, we would just write the following line of code. Turtle.forward, and then in parentheses, we would write 200. I'm gonna save my file. I'm going to click F5, which is a shortcut to run my file. And there we go, guys. So um, you would have seen that Toby actually moved forward or he moved to the right of his home. And now, how about we move him um, 350 pixels backward? Now to do that, we would write the following to so turtle.back. And in parentheses, you got it. 350. I'm going to run this. So look at that. Of course, it runs um, like our whole file. So it moved Toby forward 200 pixels, which was the previous line of code we did, and it moved him back 350. So as you all see, Toby is definitely having a lot of fun swimming around. He's moved to the right side and to the left side of his window of a home. Now he wants to explore the top and the bottom. Now how do we do that? Well, let me ask, how would you guys move towards something that you wanted to go to? Well, you'd probably turn your body in the direction of the target and start walking towards it, right? Well, guess what? We write the same kind of code to turn Toby around. Let's say we wanted to take Toby towards the top of the screen first. Now, what direction would he first have to turn in order to face the top. You got it, left. So we move Toby to the left a specific or certain amount. Let's say a turtle, oops, turtle dot left, and in parentheses, write the number 90. So save it, run it. Awesome, so Toby should now be facing the top of the computer screen, and that's exactly what you want. So let me explain more about the code that we just wrote. The number that we're putting in the parentheses is a number of degrees. So these degree measurements, you know, when passed as numbers, can be very useful when moving Toby around, especially in moving him in like specific directions. So now you guys should know the rest. To move Toby forward or to bring him to the top of the screen, we would write turtle dot forward and in parentheses 200 so there you go he went forward he went back to 50 and he turned 90 degrees to upward and now he moved 200 um, pixels towards the top of the screen. It's so a great job, everyone. Now, Toby the turtle has explored part of his awesome ocean screen home. So like you guys should know, all that's left is, is to explore the bottom of the screen. Now, 
how about we move him near the bottom right corner, right over here? So remember, our first step is to turn Toby towards the correct direction, and then of course we can move him. I'm gonna close this, these windows. So first, we write this code. Turtle dot write, in parentheses, write the number 150, because that's the number of degrees that we want to move him. So save the file, and I'm gonna run, and let's see what happens. Awesome, so he went up, he's in that same um, position over here at the top of the screen, and he turned 150 degrees. Now that 150 that we wrote in the parentheses stands for the number of degrees that we want to move Toby. And as you can see, he has turned that specific or given amount. So now let's see if we can move him forward enough pixels to get him to the bottom right. Let's try turtle dot forward. Oops, I forgot that. Okay, turtle that forward, better. <laughs> um, how about we try 300? Let's see what happens now. Okay, so this code didn't really take us all the way. Let's try a few more pixels to get him closer to the corner. How about we add... Um, okay, how about we add like 100 more pixels? So I'm going to write... 200 in here. Oh, sorry, 200 more pixels. That's better. Maybe this would work. So I'm going to run this code or save it, run it, and let's see where he ends out. Uh oh. So it looks like we have a, um, a error, as you can see over here. So let's try to figure out what I did wrong. It could be something as simple as, yep, a spelling mistake. Okay, so I forgot the R in forward. Let's try that again. Sorry about that. At least we fixed it. Yay, so that's better. Great job, everyone. If you follow along with me with your turtle, then you have not successfully made your turtle explore all of his home. Now you guys can definitely continue in, you know, playing around with the forward, back, left, and right functions to move your turtle more. So, um, but now we are actually going to move on to doodles and shapes. So yes, even though it's called the turtle module, we can still use it for drawing and creating shapes as well. In fact, this module, meaning the turtle module, provides us with many different functions that can be reused for drawing on the screen object. And without any further ado, let's see how we can do that. All right, so first what I'm going to do is actually, before we start drawing, I'm gonna create a new file because I want it to be nice and clean just for the doodles and I don't want Toby the turtle to be in it. So what we're gonna do is file, new file. There we go. So here what I'm actually going to do is write import turtle. Let's show you guys how to create an instance of an object. So first, of course, we need a tool to draw with. And for that, we're gonna make an instance of the turtle object and call it pen. Now to do that, we would write this following code. Pen equals turtle dot turtle, empty parentheses. So for those of you who forgot, an instance is a copy of an object, right? And we will get all of the pre-built functions that come with the original object. So that means our new pen variable can use the functions that we used earlier with Toby. So that's how we can write code like this. Pen.color, blue, pen.pen size, and in parentheses, five. We can also write pen dot forward. I'm gonna spell this correctly. So pen dot forward 100. So I'm gonna save this file and okay, I saved my file because you have to save it to be able to run your file. And now I'm gonna click um, F5 to run it. So look at that. Um, we actually drew a blue line with those three lines of code. So you guys may be thinking, well, those functions look familiar. 
Well, that's because we actually used these in the in um, earlier in this video and in the previous one. So in our turtle's case, we use them to change his color, size, and to move him around. So since we want to use these um, to use the turtle object, you know, to draw, we reuse these same functions. All right, so now how about we start off by drawing a simple square? But first, I'm just going to delete this following code that we did to start um, to start fresh. So now, since we're going to be drawing a square, the first thing we need to do is um, choose the color of the square, just like we would do in real life. So in real life, we would choose the color with the pen or marker we would want to write with, right? So here, how about we write in um, orange? So pen dot color orange. I'm going to save my file and run it. And there you go. So over here we have a small little arrow, which is our pen object, and it is in orange. So we're on the right track. Now we would move our pen in the shape of a square. So this and means in real life, of course, we would move our hand in four different directions to make four equal sides. But how would this look in code? Well, remember, we can use any of the functions we use with Toby since we're using the same object to power up our pen. To start, we draw the first line of our square in code, and it would be something like this. Pen.forward, and in parentheses, 100. So which means, after you run it, our screen should now look like this. So now we have to move our pen upward to continue drawing the square, right? So to do that, we would have to turn our pen to the left 90 degrees. So pen dot left 90. So I'm gonna run this code. Actually, um, I don't really have to run this all the, um, the arrow is just going to be pointing upward now because we turned it to the left 90 degrees. So I'm going to run this after the next line of code. So now we draw another line that's the same size as our previous one. So that means 100 pixels, right? So pen dot forward, we're just going to write the same line, 100. So now I'm going to show you guys what we have. So there you go. We, um, awesome job everyone, now our square is half complete. Now all that's left to finish is the other two sides and I think you all know what to do. Pause this video right now and try to finish this square on your own. All right, so this is now, I'm going to be showing you the following code that you need to write that you guys should have wrote to finish your square. Pen.left90 Pen dot forward, 100, oops, I'm gonna spell that right. Now again, you're gonna write pen dot left, 90. And of course, we're gonna write again, pen dot forward, 100. All right, so now I'm going to save my file and run it. Awesome job, everyone. But you may notice that the arrow shape right here is kind of blocking our cool drawing. So luckily, we can actually hide it. To do that, you just have to write this line of code. Pen.highturtle, empty parentheses. So now, if you run this, our arrow mark should be gone. See, now we can see all of our square. So the hide turtle function does just that. It hides the shape of the turtle object you are currently using. So now we should see all of our square. Now for this square, we repeated the same code a specific number of times. What this means that we can probably make this code even better. So are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Did you say a for loop? If so, you are right. This is the code that we should now write. So what I'm going to do is delete this following code and I'm going to replace it with a for loop. So for i in range 1 through 5 colon 
Oops. There we go. And now I'm going to write the um, two lines of code that we've been repeating. I'm also pen dot left 90 degrees. So I'm going to save this file. That's much better. So whenever you guys think you can make your code easier to understand as we did here by using less code, it's really um, best to do so. That way, when we have to look back at our code, we'll know exactly what's happening. So right now, how would I actually, you know, put the hide turtle because I deleted that. So pen.hide turtle. Now we're all set. So that's all for today's video, guys. I hope you guys had fun moving your turtle around the screen and drawing really um, a really cool square in the turtle module. So in my next video in the series, we will be going deeper into drawing shapes in the turtle module. For example, filling them with color and making cool doodles. Well, that's all for today, guys. Bye, guys, and stay safe.